segment of our finance committee meeting. Um, and that is going to be payday loans. That's House Bill 145, loans under 25,000. Um, and public testimony was kept open. And so we're going to continue where we left off. And just as a reminder, if folks would like to submit written testimony, they can do so um, by emailing us at house.finance at aKLEG.gov. And so with that, um, looks like we've got a few people here um, and I'm going to jump in and start with Mr. Patrick uh, Brenner. Uh, looks like you're calling in from Las Cruces, New Mexico. If you could state your name and your affiliation and uh, proceed with your three minute testimony. Uh, Chairman, ranking member and esteemed committee members, thank you for allowing me to testify today. My name is Patrick Brenner. I am representing both the Southwest Public Policy Institute and myself as a concerned citizen. And I'm here to discuss the consumer credit issues in light of the bill before you today, House Bill 145 and similar laws. In January of 2023, New Mexico adopted a rate cap law intended to eliminate, quote, predatory lending. Despite these intentions, the results have been disappointing. The anticipated market adjustment did not materialize and traditional banks and credit unions have not filled the void left by small dollar lenders. I personally tested the accessibility of emergency credit under these conditions by applying for small dollar loans from major banks and credit unions in New Mexico. Despite applying at institutions like Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, and Bank of America, as well as 15 credit unions, I faced rejections from all the banks and only conditional approvals from just two credit unions after expense of substantial effort and time. The application process was excessively complex, involving numerous requirements, the opening of new accounts, considerable financial commitments, and extensive paperwork. I spent about 20 hours over two months attempting to secure just one emergency loan and that is a task that would be nearly impossible for most consumers, especially during financial emergencies. Moreover, this effort significantly harmed my credit score, which dropped over 100 points due to multiple hard credit inquiries by these institutions. This has subsequently increased my borrowing costs. I urge the committee to recognize the practical shortcomings of House Bill 145 as seen in New Mexico. The expectation that banks and credit unions would replace alternative lenders has not been met, and the complex and lengthy approval processes, along with the negative impact on credit scores, further disadvantage subprime consumers. In closing, I'd like to ask the committee to consider these real-world impacts and the need for balanced regulations that ensure accessible credit for all, particularly those in precarious financial situations. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Brenner.